that was like that was just like wholesome rock and roll. That was just like you know, but you had a lot of things going on in there. Like show your face. Face. Face? Yeah. Alright. It's like faith and face and Yeah, I guess it's uh, it's kind of a I'm not particularly religious, I'm spiritual. Yeah, me too. But uh but yeah, there are kind of religious connotations in there. But like I feel like you as a human um, talk, we were talking about cats a little bit. Like, I feel like you're a cat. Yeah. Because how many lives have you had, guess? Well, yeah, I'm probably running out of them by now. But I don't yeah, think so. I, I'm definitely a cat. I was tripping with some friends once, and they all thought I was a cat. Well, I was just thinking during that song, like, you know, <laughs> it, I think you are. Yeah, I love yeah, cats. So I, I definitely like it. And they love me, you know. Because I swear to God, you've had more than a few lives. I don't know if you're up to nine yet, but you can move this if you want. Um, you you just always come back. You land on your feet somehow. Well, actually, I've been off them for about the last nine weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why. Yeah, I had to uh, recharge the batteries a bit. It's because, like, going through one of those lives. Yeah, I guess so. I, I, I did the back end really badly, and I wasn't able to walk. But, uh, mm -hmm. I had some magic treatment done here. Nice. Um, yeah, you said Thai. Yeah, Thai massage. massage. They use feet. Yeah. And they pull your arms, and then shiatsu massage. And and yeah, really, I, I had all these, all these stressed out uh, muscles. muscles all around my lower back. Yeah. In fact, all, my whole body was one massive sort of stress. Spasm. Yeah, and I, and I got symptoms. And it worked. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't go jumping around and everything, but like I can walk with no pain. And it was after the massage. Yeah, she said, you're going to feel better. And like for that night, I still felt really bad. And right, like, the I day after. I was staying after. in a house down in Pennsylvania, in Philly, you know. Going to bed that night, I literally crawled up the steps. I was in such. Right. Were you like crying, like saying, "Why the hell did I do that?" Or did you well, know? No, it was no. Gonna I, work? I had faith that it yeah, was. Yeah, it so worked. I had a great sleep. Best sleep I had in ages. You know, because I've really been sleeping badly. So I had a great sleep. Oh, good. Woke up yesterday, and I've been feeling better ever since. Good for you. Good so for I'm just gonna like keep. So you know, Frenchie. Frenchie saw that you were coming on the show. And he asked, you know Frenchie from, from England? From London, yeah. yeah. He, he wrote me a question to ask you, and I forgot to read it. So, like, I don't even, the Frenchie, I'm so sorry, but, like, oh. he, he, I said. I know him from way back. Yeah, he, he, said, that, face back. he face said there face was back. a lot of. Um, we should drink in the same pub. Yeah, maybe it was about that. He's got click nine records. Yes, he does. He's a great guy. Well, he's also like a cat, kind of, I think. So they put an album of mine out, and the, like my old band, The Lightning Raiders, they just put it out about two or three months ago, 32 years late. Wow! It's got, it's got really good reviews in Mojo and all, all, all the English press. I've had like Brian James, who's been a Dan, he called me the other day. Or nice! He, he emailed me the other day and said... He read it? Yeah, he said you're getting great reviews, and then somebody uh, paste, posted one on Facebook. And you're in that movie too. Yeah, it's they still. I mean, it's finished. They still have to. Um, they're still trying to like sell it. You know, they, it's a lost. Like, lost rockers. Yeah. And uh, since I saw you, like, it was when last time I was here it was 2010. But you know, I just done my interview then. Since then, they interviewed Lemmy about me, which is ah. Because I, I talk about him a lot because he's always trying to help me right. over the years. And uh, so they said, do you think you could get? Uh, Asked Levy to be in the film, and I said, "Well, yeah, I'll give and you a ring." You spoke about Levy and yeah, Rob so, so at so, uh, Roseland when you were here. I remember. Yeah. So I spoke to uh, I, I called Lemma and I said, uh, uh, "You know, I'm in this film." I told him the premise of the movie, and I said, uh, "You know, it's kind of like talented people who fall into the cracks." He said, "Well, like you and me," and I said, "Well, I think you're a little higher in the ladder." Yeah, than I am, uh, you know? but he doesn't. But no, I know he should be bigger than what he is. Yeah, you know, the guy is like the, Motorhead. I mean, we all know who music he is. wouldn't be the same without him. Probably like hard not. rock, heavy metal would not have been the same. But I had a definite like, inspiration of musicians and fans. Or so, like, you were almost in The Pretenders, right? Yeah, Lenny, and that incidentally uh, told Chrissy to get me. And uh, we rehearsed for a couple of weeks, almost a month. And then I went to Hereford, where I'm from in England, for Easter. And I ran into Pete Farner, who was like my old best friend. And uh, I started playing this American show in London. She's got a deal, the songs are great, you know, and it turned out he was living in London. So we exchanged ah. numbers. So then we came back told Chrissy about the deep six, great bass player, you know, he's living in London. So we got together, rehearsed for uh, about a month, 
Then they started fucking each other, which is weird because she's like, come on to her, and she was saying, like, oh, I don't want to get involved with my musicians. And all that. Anyway, they started fucking each other, and then, like, and she was kind of hard to work with. I mean, well, it wasn't the easiest person in the world, but one day, like, I just get a call from the manager saying, I got bad news, what? You're fired. And I said, well, I don't accept it from you, Dave. I'm out here from Chrissy, right? And, uh, so then I went and saw Chrissy, and, like, it was, oh, uh, no, then we were supposed to meet. And she didn't show up, and Pete was there, and like, I don't know exactly. Did the bass player still play? Yeah, and he carried on, and then he put the rest of the band together. They were all from Hereford, where I come from. Ah. But when we were playing, our working title before the Pretenders, we were called the Hereford Bulls, when it was just Pete and I. Ah. Hereford Bulls, you know the old homestead restaurant? That's yeah. a Hereford Bull outside. Oh. They were all famous. On 8th Avenue. Yeah, on 9th. Yeah, that's a Hereford Somewhere Bull. Somewhere on the west side. That's what we call a Hereford Bull. Wow. So, Jill, do you know about them? I had one. I rescued a tiny little cat. (laughs) (laughs) He was five months old. He was running loose in the area. I lived in Farmland in New Jersey. His owner had left town and left his gate open. He escaped, came to me because I had more than a true story. I stalked him for four months. The police couldn't catch him. I finally got him into my barn. I guess they live in Jersey, too. And I named him Francis. (laughs) Francis, Francis lived to be 10 years old. Nice. So when did you switch from drums to guitar? Uh, in, uh, well, I switched, from drum, I switched from drums to vocals in, uh, in 1980. I was in a French band that we made a 12-inch EP, which I drummed on. And, uh, and we fired a singer. And, uh, I ended up singing some of it. And then I suddenly fell in love with singing. Even though I love drumming, I just made this decision. I'm going to be this singer in this band. So I told them. Did they sing in French? Uh, no, no, they sang in English. And uh, oh, with a mixture, of, there was some like some French words in it, but mainly English. And, uh, but then I just made my mind up that I wanted to sing, and I told them that, and they agreed. Basically, I wasn't too happy because he liked the way I drum, but in the end, he said, "Yeah, you must sing." But then we moved back to London because I'd been in Paris for nine weeks, kind of had enough of it. Then, nine weeks was enough. Yeah, I mean, I like it for visits, but you know, it was yeah. nine weeks. I wanted to get back. I wanted to find an English drummer. So I came back to London, and uh, then they, they didn't follow me. So then I was certainly bandless, but I decided I was going to be a singer now. And I ended up crashing at uh, who would turn out to be my manager's apartment. And, uh, he kept saying, he was managing a band called the Lightning Raiders, and he needed a singer. Ah. And he kept saying, you play guitar? And I said, well, I can a bit, but I'm not good enough to play on stage, which I wasn't at that time. I, mean, I could just play. Right. So in the end, like, but they, they heard my tape with me singing, and, uh, and so they, they Persuaded, he persuaded them. I knew all the guys in there. Persuaded them to get me as a singer, and they got another guitar player. So when you were a little kid, what were you like? Were you a troublemaker? Yeah. What 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 did you used to do to get in trouble? Everything. You know, I was in trouble. Your brothers and sisters? Yeah, older brother. I, I'm the baby of the family. So you were able to get away with more. Yeah, right? probably. You know, like, but like, there was no favoritism. But being the baby, I guess. Yeah, they're always it. over it by then. Yeah, like, my brother's a lot older, so like, you know. Basically, he'd gone by the time I was really growing up. My sister was a bit older. But, um, no, yeah, I was just in, I, I was always like in trouble at school. I was in a cathedral choir. I got to be head boy, but I was still in trouble. Head boy? Yeah. That's kind of like a Nazi moron. <laughs> it wasn't a Catholic choir, was it? By no, it was Catholic. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. Oh, didn't have all that guilt. We had, might have to shut this fucker down. I'm sorry. <laughs> didn't have all the guilt. It was just a regular Protestant. You know? I know. I go right to the gutter. I can't help it. That's okay. That's where the rest of us are. <laughs> but yeah, I was always in trouble. Like I, I remember the, the choir master wrote to my father saying that I, I had a rebel nature and I was antisocial. So uh, that years later, I wrote a song called Attitude, and I put those words in the song. You know? There you go. That's what I'm seeing. But that's exactly what Guitars Not Guns is about. You take situations like that. You log in at every bank, and, and then years you later, you write create them. with them. And you yeah. use them in a way that is healing rather than hurting. Oh, it's all very therapeutic, right? Because, I mean, that's what the blues Except is all that. about, right? The blues, it's like you sing the blues to rid the blues. Yeah, right. You can sing. Not all blues are sad, sad songs, actually. And like if them. they are, they're sad because when you sing them, you feel better. Right. So, like, the whole point is to, like, you you can wallow all you want, but if you paint a picture or make a song, it makes you feel better. 
Yes. Better than anything. It is. So we want to just promote creativity. It's yeah. the only thing that I think works. Yeah, what do you yeah, think? Yeah. And a Thai massage. Yeah, right. <laughs> I certainly <laughs> recommend that. <laughs> Yeah, because not everybody can create. Well, not, not everybody can make music. Yeah, but I think so everybody should have to take a chance. To, yeah, everybody should uh, take a chance on creating I feel like if, uh, I, on the arts. I know. <laughs> I almost feel like I, I, I had this thought like a couple of a month or so ago, like a, a room. If you're in a room with mud and you just play in the mud, like anyone could do that. And wouldn't that be better than like... You just described my early years. Huh? Just describe my middle years. Did you do that? I had mud in the room, and I completely played in it. And was it fun? Well, they banished me to the village, and uh, <laughs> I've never been back to Nyack since. Thank you. Yes, you have, because I've been there. Oh, that's Blank right. Fest. That's right. Well, so we're going disguise. Yeah. So <laughs> well, tell us about Blankfest. Did Gas ever play in Blankfest? No, but I'd love him to, actually. But do you before... know what Blankfest is, Gas? No, I don't. Uh, Let's hear about it. Well, enough about me. You know, seriously, um, my favorite Gas story, though, I just want to say... Uh, you know what my favorite gas story is. Uh-huh. You were a, a teenager, I think it was, and you sort of left home momentarily, and you went to London, and you showed up on someone's doorstep. Oh, yeah, well, I, I, I hadn't left, I'd been, I'd left home a long time. But oh, okay. My band was trying to get stoned, that's so <laughs> The road was trying to get stoned. Uh, Paging my Parker band Ford. was trying to get signed <laughs> to Rolling Stone Records, right? And, uh... We, we lived in Barnes, which is an area of London where there's a famous recording studio, Olympic, where some of the greatest albums ever were made. And uh, we'd been trying to get on Rolling Stone Records, and I walked past, and I saw Ronnie Wood sitting outside. So I went over, and I said, who's the A&R man for Rolling Stone Records? He said, speak to Jagger or Keith. So we're, like, a couple of days later, we're driving in Keith's neighborhood, and we, we'd met these dealers that supposedly sold an answer to this and answer that, and we we had the same street, but three, it turned out, all wrong addresses. So anyway, we're driving down, we saw this silver gray Ferrari Gino with California plates, and this beautiful townhouse. Which was, side was the steering wheel on? It was a Cal it was the left hand drive, it was California, okay. California plates. Beautiful 70s Dino, Ferrari Dino, really, really cool car. And uh, so anyway, like we figured he might have the best, so I went and rang the bell, and a voice says, hello. And I says, does Keith Richard, he was, he was called Keith Richard there, he hadn't had it yet. I said, does Keith Richard live there? He says, yes, he does, he wants him. So I said who I was and why I was there. And then he went, hang about, just hang about in the garden, I'll be down in a minute. So, you know, I realized I'm talking to him and I'm all, all excited. You know? So I go and tell my mate, and like, he shoots up, we don't have the tape, so he drives off back home to get it. So Keith obviously wanted to check me out, make sure I wasn't the old, the old Bill, as he called him. And uh, anyway, a few minutes later, in, in I go, and so we go in the kitchen, he said, do you want a cup of tea? So we just start chatting, and uh, then Spanish Tony arrived, who was his henchman, who, who if it, incidentally, if he'd been there, and I'd said, does Keith Richard live there, he'd have said no. So right. he, he didn't like me off the bat, because I penetrated the security. God, every word you say, like, I, it's hilarious. So, <laughs> Shoots off. So anyway, Keith, right. Keith said, do you, want some, uh, do you want to do some coke? And I said, sure. Of course he said that. <laughs> so he poured this pile of like the best stuff out. And I thought he was going to split it three ways. Anyway, he hands me a brick, and it was all for me. So I'll ah. get, get Joey well wet, you know. And um, So anyway, uh, he says, what are you doing now? I said, I'm waiting for my buddy to get back with a hit or something for you and the, and the tape. And he said, oh, well, I've got to go and give an interview. He said, you may as well start. You may as well come along with, with me to start getting a name around. Give all the showbiz bullshit. We can even say you're our new drummer. <laughs> so up we go, we get in his car, and he puts in an unmixed tape of it saying rock and roll the album. They could just left a couple of hours early to fly to LA to mix it. So I heard some of it's only rock and roll, and then wow. we get there, and like, because I've done all this blow, I, I'm drinking Jack Daniels like it's going out of fashion. So like, I guess, eventually I pass out. And then I wake up hours later, and I'm in this I'm in the dark, and I've got my head in the sink, I haven't got a clue where I am. So I lift my head up, and a shelf shatters in the sink. And I go, where the fuck am I? You know, I really haven't had a clue. Then my singer walks in, I was a drummer, my singer walks in, and then I figured out, wow, I'm in the keys house, and I'm kind of embarrassed. And anyway, I get myself together, and I walk down a flight of stairs, and I walk into a room, 
I don't know if you've ever seen Performance, the movie with me. I have, with it, Anita Pellenberg. Yeah, where she's sitting across the desk. Yes, I've It's like it. a scene out of that movie that you, you almost feel that the sin go... I, I as I walk it. in the room and she said, Peace downstairs at your friend listening to some music. So, uh, <laughs> and then I saw Spanish Tony standing there and I said, What happened? Did you carry me out? And he went, Off, carried off, dragged. Oh. Like, he just really loved me, you know. So anyway, I went downstairs and there was Keith. So I went over and he was holding court and my playing tapes and I went over and apologised. He said, ah, it's all right, don't worry about it. I do it all the time. So anyway, <laughs> I couldn't have been that outraged just because I got invited back again. You probably did it on purpose just to watch someone else act like that, so. Yeah. So anyway, I got let in his house, he meant to say a rehearsal for you. But I got, and uh, yeah, and I used to like, get a stone on him, actually. Yeah. Did you stay friends for, for a while? Yeah, I've seen him a couple of times since. Didn't see him for a long time, but I've in seen him since I've never been to the house yet. But I'm good friends with his wife's best friend, Nancy, so it was probably about a time before maybe I'll go up. Cool. But uh, I'd like to say he's so cool, you know. He like, is. The fact, you know, because he didn't know me from Adam. I, he could, is I could have well. woken up in the drunk tank at the nearest police station, yeah. you know what I mean? No, he's so If cool. it had been Jagger or Rod Stewart or something like that, they'd have said, let's get rid of this geezer, you know. You know, I would have ended up in the drunk tank. So Keith t took me home, and I thought, not him personally, but he said, take him back to my house, and I thought that was really cool. He's yeah. for real. And God I have him. a friend who's a translator in Japan, and she translates for, like, so many people, and the Stones were one of them. And Keith just, she said he is just the nicest person in the it's world. He used to take her out to eat all the time because she's like this skinny Japanese girl and she, he couldn't believe how much she ate. So he used to like take her out to watch her eat. He couldn't believe it. And then his kids were getting tattooed and he, he said they were in Japan and he called for her to you take know, them. To, yeah, to get, translate. Yeah. She was like, why do they come here for tattoos? Like, can't they just get them in America? But like, I so guess they, they wanted, wanted Japanese, Japanese ones. Style. Yeah. Yeah, and she like made sure his kids got Japanese tattoos, and yeah, she loves him. She said he is the nicest one. Yeah. But she also says in most bands, it's the most alcoholic, drug addict person that is the nicest one. Yeah, I mean, they're very different, him and Mick. I mean, they make a great team. They, you know, they're still doing it after 50 years. They're amazing. amazing. I mean, they really are. They are. Well, you look like you could be a Rolling Stone. Yeah, other people have said that. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I so, mean, actually, when the... Uh, Back in the, like, the early 90s, people used to say, ah, oh, Black Crows, or this guy's uh, Black Crows, and I used to say, no, Rolling Stones, actually. Yeah, yeah, you could easily get away with that, don't you think? Absolutely. Well, so do you have a website these days, or do you have any gigs Just, coming up? Uh, we're playing Delancey, Delancey on uh, the 9th, uh, 8th, uh, Friday the 8th of November, part of Wood's birthday extravaganza. Oh. And then we're playing the Cyborg Cafe the following Saturday, the 16th. And uh, I don't have a website, but we're on Facebook. I, I'm on Facebook personally, and the Love Pirates are on Facebook. Yeah. Love Pirates. It's my band. It's such a good name. I love the band, you know. It's, it's best hard player in the world. He's, he's, he's good, Andrew. Oh, yeah. yeah. He used to be my guitar tech, and then he picked up harp and uh, Jesus. never looked back, you know. Great. Love Pirates. Any like? Oh, I think you've shared yeah. enough. Yeah, please. Like Do you want to dip it in? Do yes, you want some Boston cream? Boston Cream Pie Day. So, um, Ken, you want to play a song? Yeah, I will. All right, so give it up for Gaspar. Oh. Let's try his Boston Cream Pie. National Boston Cream Pie Day. So, Ken, glad to be alive. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we will be right back. Beautiful holy water coming out.